Hi, today we're gonna create a gaming logo in Adobe Illustrator. First, we need to create a grid. Grids are super helpful in logo design because they allow us to be consistent in size and spacing. And this is very important. A good logo must be consistent. We'll use a 12 by 12 grid and we want each cell to be 50 pixels in size, which is a nice round number to work with. To do that, we'll use the rectangular grid tool, which is accessible under the line segment tool. Click anywhere in the artboard to bring up the grid customization menu, set the size to 600 by 600 pixels, the vertical and horizontal dividers to 11, and press OK. Now we'll turn this grid into guides so it's easier to work with. With the grid selected, align it to the center of the artboard using the Align panel. If you're missing any panel I mentioned in this video, they can all be open in the Window menu. Then, ungroup all the shapes using Ctrl or Command Shift G, right click anywhere in the artboard and choose the Make Guides option. The grid turned into guides, but they are still selectable, and this can be a little bit annoying, so let's use the shortcut Ctrl Alt semicolon or Command Option semicolon if you're on a Mac to lock them and prevent them from being selected. Now we can start to create our logo. First, we need two rectangles that are 600 by 350 pixels. See, this is why we chose a round number like 50 as the cell size for our grid. It just makes it very easy to create the shapes. Ok, select the rectangle tool by pressing M and instead of clicking and dragging to create the rectangle, just click once in the artboard and this menu will open, allowing you to precisely customize the size of it. After the rectangle is created, press V for the selection tool and drag the rectangle holding Alt or Option to duplicate it. Position the second rectangle on the bottom of the grid, this one will be the controller. If the objects are not snapping to the grid, make sure that Smart Guides are active in the View menu. Select the other rectangle and rotate it 90 degrees. To do that, hover the mouse close to the corner of the bounding box until the rotate icon appears then click and drag holding shift. Holding shift will lock the rotation in increments of 45 degrees. After rotating the rectangle, position it on the left side of the grid. Now we need to round the corners of these rectangles, and that is very simple. Select both rectangles, press A for the direct selection tool, and drag the live corner widgets to the maximum. The next step is to change the color of these rectangles. The bottom one will have no fill and a red stroke. You can change that in the color panel. The hex codes for the colors I'm using are in the description if you want to follow along. We also need to change the thickness of the stroke, so open the stroke panel and set the weight to 50. Also align the stroke to the inside. The rectangle on the left will have no stroke and a darker red fill. Ok, now we need to make the shadow of the controller. We'll select the bottom rectangle and duplicate it, but we'll do it in a different way than we did before, because we need it to stay in the same place. So just select it, copy with Ctrl or Command C, and use the paste in front command by pressing Ctrl or Command F. It looks like nothing happened, but that is just because paste in front pastes the object in the exact same place. Now go to the stroke panel, align the stroke to the outside, then go to the color panel and change the color of the stroke to an even darker red. With the shadow created, we need to cut some of these shapes out. But before we can do that, we need to expand these strokes. This just means transforming the stroke into a filled object. Select both strokes, go to the object menu and click on expand appearance. We can see that now the strokes have been turned into filled objects. To cut out the parts we don't want from these shapes, we'll use the Shape Builder tool. Let's hide the guides so we can see better what we're doing. Use the shortcut Ctrl or Command semicolon. Now select all three shapes and press Shift M to select the Shape Builder tool. You can also access it from the toolbar on the left. You can see that as we hover the mouse over the shapes, they get highlighted. With this tool, we can remove, add or combine these shapes to our heart's content. So let's start by dragging over the outline of the controller to combine the two shapes that got separated. Then hold the Alt or Option key and notice how the plus symbol turns into a minus, meaning we'll now remove parts of the object. Click to remove the bottom part of the left rectangle as well as the part of the shadow that is not overlapping the other shapes. 
since we just want the shadow on top of the rectangle. Ok, now we can turn the guides back on by pressing Ctrl or Command semicolon once again. The next step is to create the buttons. For the right side buttons, press L to select the ellipse tool and click anywhere in the artboard to bring up the ellipse menu. Each button will fill one cell of the grid, so 50 by 50 pixels. Make sure it is the same color of the controller. Move the button to its place, then make three duplicates by dragging the ellipse holding Alt or Option and position them accordingly, always paying attention to the grid. For the D-pad, press M and click on the artboard to create a 50 by 150 pixels rectangle. Position it on the grid, align with the buttons and then round the corners to the maximum. Copy the rectangle using Ctrl or Command C, paste in front using Ctrl or Command F and rotate it 90 degrees holding Shift. If you want, you can combine these two rectangles into a single shape by using the Shape Builder tool once again. Now our logo is almost done. For the last touch, I feel like this corner is too rounded and does not resemble a heart, which is the intention of this logo. So what we're going to do is select the Add Anchor Point tool by pressing the plus key on the keyboard and add a new anchor point on the outside of the controller outline. Press A for the Direct Selection tool and move this anchor point to the corner of the grid. Now we need to get rid of this curvature, so press Shift-C to select the Anchor Point tool and click once again in the Anchor Point. This will turn it into a sharp corner. Now press A again for the Direct Selection tool and double-click on the Live Corner widget to open the Customization menu. Input 50 pixels as the radius and hit OK. Now the finishing touch is to just hide the guides again, select everything and rotate 45 degrees. And then we're done! What did you think of this project? Would you change something? Would you do something different? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. As for me, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day! Bye!